Maybe you've heard before that you should aim for an RT60 of about 0.3 seconds in your home studio. So if you then measure your room with RoomEQ Wizard, for example, and you look at the RT60 tab, and you see that you're at 0.15 seconds, does that mean you should start actually taking out panels? The truth is, RT60 in small studios doesn't mean what you think it does. And if you start chasing those numbers, it'll only have you turning in circles. Hey, what's up? It's Jesko from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. And if you're serious about getting your room under control without killing the vibe, check out my Build a Better Bass Trap course. In it, I show you how to solve the low-end problem while keeping your room lively. As always, links in the description. But back to the topic of this video. So if you've measured, let's say, 0.15 seconds, 0.1 seconds RT60 in your studio, but you've read that you should be aiming for 0.3 seconds, does that mean you should take out panels from the room? The short answer is a definitive no. And if you've checked out last week's video, which I'll link in the card right now, about over damping your room, then you know already that this isn't really something you can do. But let me take this question to understand how RT60 actually works, what it means, and why it's not really relevant for small studios. Let me start by reading a quote from the Master Handbook of Acoustics by Everest and Pullman, because I think it really defines RT60 nicely. Reverberation time, RT, is a measure of the rate of decay of sound. It is defined as the time in seconds required for sound intensity in a room to drop 60 decibels from its original level. The 60 dB figure was chosen arbitrarily, but it roughly corresponds to the time required for a loud sound to de decay to inaudibility. The definition of reverberation time is based on uniform distribution of energy and random directions of propagation. These idealized conditions do not exist in small absorptive rooms because of room mode effects. So what we measure technically should not be called reverberation time. It is more properly termed decay rate. So in other words, what we measure in small rooms isn't RT60 at all. It's more of a decay rate at the exact position of the microphone. And the main problem is that we don't have a fully diffuse sound field that we're measuring in a room. You could argue that in an untreated room, it is still the most diffuse it's ever going to be. But as you start putting absorption in the room and you start removing reflections, the sound field becomes less and less diffuse. And so you're not actually measuring RT60. You're simply measuring a decay rate at the position of the microphone. So already that tells us that all of the theory around RT60 that is proposed for the use in acoustics doesn't really work in small rooms because we're not actually using or measuring the, the correct metric that we need in all the models that use RT60. Here's what Floyd Toole has to say about it in the book Sound Reproduction, Loudspeakers and Rooms. So he says, Diffuse field theory may not apply perfectly to concert halls, but it applies even less well to other kind of rooms. These are not Sabine spaces, and it is not appropriate to employ calculations and measurements that rely on assumptions of diffusivity. Or in other words, the math behind RT60 doesn't really apply to small home studios. He goes on to say, many thoughtful people believe that RT is unimportant or irrelevant. Yet, RT is runely included as one of the measures of small listening and control rooms for international standards, even to the point of specifying allowable variations with frequency. But he doesn't stop there. Reverberation time is a property of the room alone, and a correct measurement of it should employ an omnidirectional sound source. Some practitioners incorrectly use conventional sound reproduction loudspeakers as sources, the directivity of these is such that the resulting reflection patterns and decays are not properties of the room, but of the room and loudspeaker combination. So even if your room was diffuse, using conventional loudspeakers to measure it doesn't actually give you the room alone. You're measuring the room and loudspeaker combination. 
one final quote for you to really put the nail in the coffin. So this is from Acoustic Absorbers and Diffusers by Trevor Cox and Peter D'Antonio. And here's what they have to say. Sabine's formulation does not correctly predict the reverberation time for highly absorptive rooms. The reverberation time formulations are statistical models of acoustic behavior and are applicable only where there are large numbers of reflections and the sound field is diffuse. For instance, at low frequencies, the modal behavior of the room makes these assumptions invalid. Consequently, there is a lower frequency bound on the applicability of statistical absorption formulations. The lower bound is usually taken to be the Schroeder frequency. Although this formal limit has been known for many years, it does not prevent many practitioners, standards and researchers still defining and using absorption coefficients below the Schroeder frequency, as it is convenient, even if physically incorrect. Geometric room acoustic models are also used below this limit, although they have particular difficulties predicting at frequencies where there is low modal density, where correct modeling of phase is needed. So what does that mean in plain English? Well, first of all, you can't measure RT60 in small rooms because you don't have a proper diffuse sound field. Even if you did, you'd have to use an omnidirectional sound source and not a studio monitor to measure RT60. And then finally, in the bass, room modes, standing waves take over and the entire theory breaks apart anyway. Okay, so then what do you do instead? Well, as often, it becomes slightly less clearly defined just because the acoustics of small home studios is so difficult. And in my experience, in my opinion, it doesn't really matter whether you end up with a reverb time RT60 of 0.3 or 0.15 seconds or whatever in the measurements. What matters is that you have a balanced reverb time across the spectrum so that you don't have overdamped highs or overdamped lows because that's what's going to give you a sound that feels comfortable and that doesn't impact the sound of the speakers more or less in any particular region of the frequency spectrum. And to be frank, in my opinion, the lower all of this is, the better, because that means that you've done a good amount of control of reflections, damping of low-end standing waves, room modes, and that means that the impact, the overall impact of the room on the direct sound from your speakers is minimized. And that's really the best you can do. You really want the sound from the speakers to be as pristine and unaltered by the room as possible. That's what's going to give you the clearest look into the music that you're actually working on. And a quick clarification at this point, if you are scared that your room is going to sound dry, I don't think that's a bad thing. In my opinion, dry just means that you've got good control and a low reverb decay rate in your room. And that is different to the room sounding dead. I've made a whole video about that that I'll link up here right now. But basically, if you've done too much damping in relation to the low end in your high end, so you've, you've reduced the reverb time a lot in the high end, but you haven't done enough treatment to the low end, you get this imbalance in the reverb time. It's probably this way around from your view. And that's what's going to make a room sound dead. There is the opposite as well, although not nearly as common, so that you've actually done enough damping in the low end, but you haven't done enough in the mids and highs, and those rooms tend to sound kind of harsh. What you want is a dry sound, low decay rate across the entire spectrum, not a dead sound, which means you've got an imbalanced decay rate across your spectrum. So no, don't pull panels out of your room just because you've read somewhere that above 0.2 seconds, you've overdamped your room. In small rooms, RT60 is a myth. What you really want is balance, not some number on a screen somewhere. And that's one of the primary drivers that actually made me create Build a Better Bass Trap. Yeah? So if you want help getting that balance in your room, again, check that out at the link in the description. All right, with that, Let's get back to having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.